So we're able to multiply those radical expressions together or even pull them apart to evaluate them more easily. So now we're going to be looking at the same for division. So the very first example, pretty straightforward. Is it going to be the same if I take the square root of the top individually and the bottom individually? Is it going to be the same as if I take the square root as a whole? So let's ask. Square root of 25, I'm looking for the principal or the positive root. So I get out 5 up top, 4 down below. And in this case, what number can we multiply times itself to get us 25 over 16 by fourths? So yes, we have that relationship with division as well. If we need to combine it, we can. If we need to split it up, we can. So let's look at a few. Working on combining them. So right now, if I try to evaluate my numerator and denominator individually, we can't. We get um, irrational numbers. But if we combine them underneath one radical, since our radicands are both positive, we're allowed to. Now, when we do that division, we can actually evaluate out. 27 divided by 3 gives me 9. The principal root of 9 is 3. So in that case, it helps us to combine them. Same thing for part B. If I try to evaluate square root 30 individually and square root 6 individually, it's going to be a little bit messy. But if we combine them, a little bit easier. So we need to simplify on the inside. Underneath that radical, what is my constant term? So just between the coefficients, 30 divided by 6 gives me 5, and a5 divided by a2. When we have the same base and division, we subtract those exponents. So how many do I have left? 3 living up top. A little bit easier to evaluate. 5 is not a perfect square, so he's going to be in our leftovers. And how do we want to break up a cubed, or a to the third? So I've got 5, the largest even power coming out of 3, usually one less than that, 2, and we need one left over. So it's evaluating out of here. The only perfect square that we have is a squared, so we get out a and root 5a. So go ahead and take those next two, combine them into one radical. And again, we're always assuming any variable represents, you know, a, a positive nice number. So in part A, what are we getting? Trying to evaluate individually isn't going to be very helpful, but if we combine it, what is 96 divided by 16? Divided by 6, giving away the answer, 16. And its principal or positive root is 4. Done. Pretty straightforward. Same story for B down here. Again, right now, trying to evaluate individually isn't very helpful. But if we actually do the division underneath one radical, 42 divided by 7 gives me 6. And I've got how many x's left over? I had 5 up top, 2 down below, so I've got 3. And 6, can we break that into a perfect square and something else? So it's even. If it was going to be divisible by something, it would be 4, since it's even. But it's not, so we can't break that one down. But x cubed, again, we can break it up into x2 and x. The only perfect square that's going to evaluate out comes from x squared, and we have our leftovers. Okay, So we can use that rule. Putting them together if it's helpful, and we're going to look at splitting it up now. All right, so on that next page, again, if I have the radical of a quotient on the inside, if that radicand is positive, we can split it up. I can take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. It means the same thing. So go ahead and evaluate each of these. We'll see what you get. In the first one, again, we can evaluate those individually. Square root of the top is 5. Square root of the bottom is 3. We're asking for the principal or the positive root. And what's the square root of 1? What do I need to multiply something times itself to get me 1? 1. It's a perfect square. And the square root of 16 is 4. And down here, again, we can evaluate individually. 
Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of t squared, they're undoing each other. We're left with t. Okay, so we got a handle on that. We can either combine them if it helps us, or we can split it up if it helps us. So sometimes a rational expression can be simplified before we start evaluating. Because if I simplify it, maybe it breaks into one that has a perfect square numerator and denominator. So we're going to look at a few of those cases. So for part A, if I try to evaluate that right now, it's not going to evaluate out nicely. And if we combine underneath one radical, we're allowed to since 18 and 50 are both positive. And is there anything that those two numbers share in common right now that I could take out of both? Factor of 2. So if I'm going to take 2 out of 18, I'm left with 9 up there. And if I take 2 out of 50, I'm left with 25. And what is the same thing divided by the same thing? 2 divided by 2, 1. It goes away. And now, can we evaluate that? Very easily, I've got square root of 9 over the square root of 25, which is 3 fifths. Sometimes it's beneficial to look in the beginning and see if they have any factors in common that we can take out of both. For part B, again, their radicands are both positive, so we can combine it into one quotient. And just looking at these two numbers, what do they share in common? A factor of 10, so 256 and 10, and 289 and 10. Same thing divided by the same thing is gone. And we can evaluate these individually. The square root of 256 is 16. Square root of 289, a little bit bigger than that one, 17. And I understand these numbers are larger, harder to see, but the same concept. We can take out something that's common. And the last. Again, positive, and we're assuming that the variable gives us nice values. We can combine underneath one radical. So I've got 48 divided by 3, and x3 over x7. So my coefficient, the number on the front, evaluates out nicely. I've got 16 up top. And I've got 7 factors of x down here and 3 up top. So all of my x's that are left over are living down below. And specifically, how many do we have? So 7 minus 3 is what we're left with down there. We've got x to the fourth. Perfect square and a perfect square. So we can evaluate them individually. The square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of x to the 4th, we take 4 and divide it by 2, we've got 2 left over. 